Hi everyone and welcome to this video song for on TR video. I wanted to do a follow up video to this uh, Dell Latitude XPICD. Um, I want to kind of show you what I'd done with it and um, basically you know I, want, I wanted to share some interesting things about it that I actually found out. Well I wanted to share some interesting things with you that I found out about it. Now, the first thing that I found out about this machine, let's see if I can actually um, show you on the uh, camera here, is that this is actually um, a US keyboard. I don't know if you can see it there, but um, yeah, if you look at the number two, you'll find that that's an at sign there. Um, so yeah, this this isn't this is not a UK keyboard layout machine. It's um, an American one, uh, which actually makes this my second uh, laptop with an American keyboard layout. Uh, the other one being the ThinkPad 380, no 390, which I don't think I've shown you on this channel actually. Um, subscribers of my old Blue Planet 64 channel may remember that one. Also, this is not just a bread and butter XPICD. This is actually the XPICD MMX, um, which in Dell's lineup was actually a different model. It had, um, aside from an MM MMX processor, you had uh, slightly different graphics, probably uprated, and you had a different sound card. This uses the um, ESS Audio Drive 1887 sound chipset, which is quite good. You know it. It works really quite well. Um, well, actually, it sort of works okay. Um, there are a couple of problems that you know I will show you when I come to show you this machine. Um, so without further ado, let's turn it on, and um, I'll show you one of the first things. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'll show you one of the first things I actually had to do. Okay, so the BIOS revision is actually A08. Now, when I got this machine, it was revision A05. Um, <clears throat> now, in order to update the BIOS, I did have to kind of play dirty and force an update. Now, I wouldn't recommend this to anyone at home because updating the BIOS is, you know, can be very dangerous, especially on older machines. I think newer machines have kind of got some sort of protection measures in them and what have you, but older machines generally, you know, you're on your own when updating the BIOS. However, the only reason I had to force this to update, I mean it was the right BIOS for this machine and everything, only reason I had to force this to update is because this machine has no battery in it. Um, so obviously it was, you know, Dell laptops will not let you update the BIOS if you don't if if um you don't have it both plugged in and a battery installed. You have to have both those things well, if you have to have it plugged in and you have to have a battery inside the machine and uh, the battery has to be working um in order for you to be up able to update the BIOS. Or you could just boot from the floppy disk that the BIOS update is on and use a slash force it switch to actually make it update. And now, the reason that I did update the BIOS, because normally I wouldn't necessarily bother seeing as BIOS updating is, you know, quite a risk. Um, the reason that I did it was because uh, the old BIOS caused there to be a conflict between the infrared port and the 
sound card. So oftentimes you just wouldn't get sound. Uh, but now I've actually been able to fix that. So uh, let's escape out of the BIOS. Oh, Acronis OS selector. Now, you may remember me saying that I was going to install Windows 95 or something. Um, well, I did. But I also dual booted that with MS-DOS 6.22. So let's um, boot into MS-DOS first. And I can talk to you about another change I've made. Okay, now it's counting up the RAM. You may remember when I first got this machine, I was commenting on how it had 80 megs of RAM. Well, I was right. It did have 80 megs of RAM. However, you may have seen it there counting up to just 48 kilobytes. Uh, 48 megabytes. And there's a good reason for that. Um... I actually took out some of the RAM because I feel that 80 megs was too enough, uh, too much for the, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I just felt that 80 megs was just too much for the application that I wanted for this laptop. Um, 80 megs, you know what, I mean, originally this came with Windows 98 on it and, you know, if, if, I, if someone was going to put Windows 98 on a 166 megahertz computer, I would turn around and tell them that I think they're a wee bit crazy. However, that aside, I would turn around and say, well, you're going to need more than 32... Well, this originally came with 16 megs on board and then had two sticks of 32 megs to actually total it up to 80 megs. Um, but yeah, like I said, I personally, you know, would go for obviously higher amounts of RAM if you're running Windows 98. Not necessarily if you're running, well, to be honest, MS-DOS games, which is what I'm running on this. Now, you might notice that um, my DOS prompt looks a wee bit different, and that's because I've installed for DOS, as in F-O-U-R. It's the number for, and then DOS, as the command line interpreter. Um, and that was recommended to me by Matthew H12, who kind of guided me through setting it up. It's got a couple of neat tricks. For example, if I do a DIR command, okay, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I mean, this, uh, what I type in is bright white, as opposed to kind of the, well, what MS-DOS calls white, which is actually more of a grey colour. And um, so, anything that DOS outputs is a regular grey, anything I put in is bright white. And if I do DIR, it'll display files in different colours. These are all folders, so let's have a look at um, let's have a look at the folder for Commander Commander Keen and do another DIR. Oh. See if there's any more Windows the Windows directory. There you go. You can see all sorts of different colours based on the different kind of files. So WAV files are dark red, bitmaps are pink, executables are green, um, general files are white, backup files are dark grey, or blight, bright black as MS-DOS calls it. Seriously, have you ever heard bright black? Where else would you get that? Black is not bright, but however you look at it, bright black. <coughs> but, um, yep, it's there. Um, also, you may have noticed I had uh, the QEWM Memory Manager installed. Again, Matthew H12, thank you very much. You helped me set that up, which was uh, absolutely brilliant of you. Um, I like this program. The manifest program. Basically, that actually tells you about um, the system. It tells me it's a Pentium 166 run mode V86, whatever that means, VGA video adapter, enhanced keyboard, mouse type, port, parallel port 1, two serial parts, well, one's the infrared part, uh, game parts, none. 
Bus types, ASA and PCI. BIOS date, um, September the 16th, 1998. It shows me the conventional memory. Um, then I can have a look at the system files. And if I wanted, I could also edit them. I'll just escape out of that because, um, yeah, my config.sys is quite large, as is my auto exec file. Um, CMOS, kind of telling me all the different things. I'm quite surprised that this machine has kept time, even though it's obviously lost power every time I've unplugged it. So, hooray to that. I quite like that. It is indeed. 22 minutes past 5. Actually, no, it's more like 24 minutes past, doesn't it? But never mind. Still, it works. Uh, it's March of 5, 2013, which basically means that uh, for all you SimCity fans out there, the new SimCity is out, and to be honest, um, from what I've heard about it, I think they've ruined it. Um, what did I get? Um, what did I get to celebrate the day of the new SimCity? Yes, that's right. Um, network, no network found. And then CPU ID tells me all about the um, processor. It's got MMX technology, FPU on chip, enhanced. Well, I hope it's got enhanced mode. <laughs> Seriously. 8086, right. Okay, so that's... Um, well, let's have a look at Microsoft Windows. Microsoft Windows 3.11. It's um, an MS-DOS system. And it tells me the new uh, display is a Neomagic 1.31 800x600, 64K colour with small font. Uh, Microsoft and Telepoint. Well, I know this is uh, technically a Logitech trackball in this thing, but... I prefer the IntelliPoint driver, so that's what's that's what I've went with. Um, enhanced 101 or 102 key US or non-US keyboard. Keyboard layout US. Language interna English International. Using an English code page and no network installed. Right, so uh, let's see if I can get out of this thing. Press escape to exit manifest. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's have a wee look at Windows. So Windows is actually pretty good. Um, it performs pretty well. I must admit, the um, ever since installing QEMM, the, the performance of um, programs has increased quite a lot. Um, there's quite a few things on here. I've got one thirty twos. I have WinZip on here. Um, this is the last version I did for Windows three point one. Takes it back. Um, Cladis works far. I couldn't get that to go. Adobe Reader two. For some reason I couldn't find an Adobe Reader three point oh one. Actually. I think I might be able to sort that out. That's not going to be as much of a problem as I had originally thought it would be. If you bear with me just one moment. <clears throat> I found a few games as well. Ah, here we go. Ooh. 
Let's see if I can actually um, see if I can actually remember that. I can actually, because <laughs> I I know it. Or maybe it's not actually on this desk. However, there is something good on this desk. Click and play. Without the 3D intro on Windows 3.1. So, let's just go ahead and install this. Now one thing that you've probably noticed already about um, this particular system is um, well basically the fact that normally using when using high color video drivers in Windows 3.1 the title bar turns from dark blue to light blue but on this it's not done that. And it seems to be the same case as well. If you watch Billy Carr's video of running Windows 3.1 on his Dell Latitude CPI, he found, which also uses a NeoMagic Magigraph 128, he found Windows 3.1 drivers, and um, the same thing. Start, it started blue. And um, the Fatty Bear logo looks different. He, he's a darker colour um, than using these drivers and what he is using other drivers that use that make uh, the windows light blue so I, I really don't know what that's all about or how windows decides what color scheme it's going to be based on different video drivers i mean you know that's the sort of thing that i would have dreamt up uh, you know when i was a child you know oh yeah if you install updated video drivers it'll make your system look completely different um I mean, I always used to get excited. Is it gonna be? Is it gonna do that? Is it gonna make my system look different? You know, is it gonna change all the colours? Is it gonna be awesome? <laughs> but I don't know. As as an adult, this it kind of frustrates me a bit that it would do such a thing. You know, behave in one way. You know, and behave across the board in one way. Um, I mean, I must admit, I do like the light blue. But I find that, um, you know, the, having the colours of uh, system icons being lighter than they probably should be is a wee bit unnerving. Alright, so here's Click and Play. It's uh, nearly installed. What it's going to do now is it's going to check to see um, if the uh, display driver can handle the Click and Play um, drivers. And it seems that actually, it can. Yeah, I know there's a wee bit of screen lag. This is an active matrix display. But obviously... So from here you can actually choose to play a game, modify a game, create a new game. I remember the first time I got this program back in, in uh, 1998. It was, it was amazing. We had it on the Compaq um, Presario 2240. It came on a copy of PC Guide. I was just totally amazed. Like, you know, and, and then I got spat at, you know, spat out here. And I'm like, oh, it's, this is exciting. This is, uh, this is where I'm going to create my game and make stuff happen. Um, and it's kind of easy to kind of make a simple platformer. Basically, all you really need is a bra a background, a black ground. Yeah, let's choose this black ground. What well, is black and it's a background? There we go. And then what we need are some building blocks. So these can be platforms. 
so basically what we could have is um, some tile roofs that are suspended okay there we go and we can have a hole for the character to drop down And then obviously, just have that there. I mean, that will go off the screen. You won't actually get to see that. So, you know, if we do that, that's what the level will look like. Obviously, you can't really do anything because we need a wee sprite. We need a character. So, uh, I don't know. Let's play as this valet. Oh, first off, we need to make these into platforms. Obstacle, platform. Because if we don't make this into a platform, what's going to happen is our wee valet man will fall right through. Right, that's absolutely fine. Except there's nothing to do that you can't really play as a valet because I've not told the game that that's what we want to do. So I need to go movement. Select movement, and I'm going to go for platform, um, you can select two uh, different buttons, um, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the jump strength because uh, jump strength tends to be weak by default, so let's try the movement, I don't think the platforms will work at this point, oh yeah they will. Oh yep, there you go. There we go. Okay, that's that's absolutely fine, but let's have something that's going to be more of a danger to the character than the whole. Quasimodo. Actually, I don't see Quasimodo as much of a threat. What well, made Marion in the nineties? <laughs> what an odd thing. Okay, yeah, the evil footman of doom, right? Okay, he he's going to basically be uh, causing problems for um, the establishment and our hero, the valet. So basically, what we're gonna do, right? No, that they're not an obstacle. Okay, right. Movement. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have him moving back and forth, right? So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a path movement. Um, what we want to do is tape mouse. <laughs> tape mouse. How 90s is that? There we go. So that's a straight line. And what I want to do is reverse at the end and then loop back the movement. There we go. So, if we try the movement now. Okay, he doesn't... It's, he's kind of suspended in mid -air, and he's <laughs> And he's not facing the correct way. Oh my goodness. Oh well, never mind. Right. Okay, and while I'm at it, what I want to do is um, have some points, you know, have have something that um, our valet can actually collect. Mario has coins, Sonic has rings, Crash Bandicoot had apples, or Wumper fruit, Wumper fruit, or whatever, however you call it. So we need something for our wee hero to, to collect here. Okay, well, Crash Bandicoot collected bananas. How about we have him collect oranges? Now, I'm not planning to sell the game, so um, I would like very much if the, um, you know, 
Universal Interactive Studios, Vicarious Vengeance, whoever makes Crash Bandicoot nowadays, basically doesn't sue. That that would be really, really nice. Okay, now, um, what I can do here, I'm going to demonstrate a really neat um, feature of click and play. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the step through editor. Basically, what will happen, I can play the game, and as events happen, like um, the evil footman of doom has collided with uh, one of our points. Um, basically, I want him to ignore that, so I'm just going to let it continue. And as... Oh, it's colliding with a background object. Stop the valet, that's fine. He's colliding with the platform, that's absolutely fine. As you can see, the footman is actually just going about his merry way um, and he's completely ignoring the oranges. Now, I'm going to make press fire 1. Okay, so now I've pressed fire 1 to jump. How about we have him make some sort of a noise? Okay. So, basically, I've got um, some samples on here. Um, so, I think, let's have a look in people, can have a look, let's, um, I don't think that's a good jumping sound, neither is that. I want a kind of an exact sound, so something like, or, let's have that one. I used to use that one back when I was 13 for um, a wee game that I made. There we go. So basically now, when he jumps, he'll make that sound. Ah! Now we find that um, our hero, the valet man, has collided with the orange. Now, I do want something to happen when this happens. I do want things to happen when he collides with the orange. First... I want it to destroy the orange, so basically the orange disappears. Because I don't want him going back getting multiple points. And talking of getting points... Um, change player one score or lives. Change score. Let's say we're going to add 10 to the score. I've not actually put in a placeholder that will actually show the score yet, but never mind. Um, ah, now look what's happened. So basically, the um, valet has collided with the footman. Again, I would like something to happen. I would like to destroy our valet. Sorry. Um, I want to restart the... Um, I want to actually restart the level. So... Restart current frame, and I want to subtract a life. Um, actually, but while we're at it, we're, we're going to have um, a noise happen when he dies. So, um, I've got just the one, actually. And the reason all these drives are here is because of the PC card drivers. How about this? Sounds a wee bit like Barney Gumble from The Simpsons. Perfect. Love it. <laughs> um, and while I'm at it, change... Oh, wrong one. Change this. Subtract to life. So, there we go. Now I'm going to exit out of the uh, step through editor. Just going to close out of that because I need to do a couple of things. Need to do a wee bit of housekeeping. First off, I want to make a title screen. So you know, I'll just stick a backdrop in there. Something like, um, what about this? this? This is kind of a nice. There we go. And I'm 
what I can do here, I can actually create a new text object. Valet Hero. Basically what I'm going to do is I need to select that, put the font, and we're going to select white, which basically makes it invisible in here. We're going to have, um, oh no, it's in silver at the moment. Do you know what? That'll do. Let's, let's, let's put it in silver. Or grey, as it's more commonly, commonly known. Here we go. Valley Hero. And then what I'll do is I'll uh, put a question and answer object. Um, do you wish to play? Um, let's put... Um, I I know Matthew 12 will appreciate that. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, right, okay. So what we're going to do is have this. And what I can do is I can actually use the event editor. So first off, what I want to do at the start of the level... Let's um, let's have some music playing for the title screen, okay? Let's play in loop music. So, you know, these silly people who like to, you know, put in a game just to listen to the music. I'm looking at you, the Paramount Galaxy. Puts on Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, pulls over in a car, listens to the radio station. We've all done it. Let's be honest. Grand Theft Auto has the best music. Although I must admit, I did it at the uh, start screen of my first encyclopedia when I was uh, on my Toshiba Satellite Pro 430 CDT. Um, I like this song. Seems funny, in Windows 3.1 it seems to have a... It seems to have a, um, well, seems to have at least a good stab at trying to play um, FM, uh, Wavetable Synthesis. Right, okay, so now the question and answer object, I can actually, um, say, if you remember, I put yes as the correct answer. So is the answer correct? What I want the game to do on the correct answer is go to... The level, so level one. Okay. Um, if the answer is no, what I want it to do, if the answer is false, I want it to end the game. Now, even though this is a Windows 3.1 application, and yes, I know a lot of Windows 3.1 applications did it, this actually does make use of the right mouse button, which is quite nice. Um, just makes the program that much easier to use and, and just a wee bit more pleasant. Okay, now back to the storyboard we go. I want to create two new screens. I want to make a game over screen. So I'm going to have a um, quick backdrop object. It's just going to have it in black. Um, I'm just going to enlarge that. Hang on, can I actually um, change the resolution of this? Nope. Um, whoops. There we go. There we I must admit, the scroll bars act weirdly on this program. You can't just kind of press the up or down arrows, because it don't, don't really work. You have to actually grab the actual square itself. It does kind of make it a wee bit difficult when trying to do, you know, precise scrolling. So you 
especially on an 800 by 600 display where you, you know, really have to work hard to get things to fit on the screen. Okay, so there we go. I wonder if I had the old English font, that'd be, that'd be awesome. You know, some sort of gothic font for Game Over. Would actually, um... We're gonna go for teal. Aerial rounded MT bold. I don't think that's the sort of font I'm looking for. Ah yeah, the old Windows Reaper. <laughs> the script writing. Ah yeah, and all the non-true type fonts. Script, I remember that font. My goodness, that brings it all back. Okay, so no gothic font. Do you know what, I'll, I'll choose a brush script. Or Mature to MT script capital. What the? Call your font something like, I don't know, that we can actually understand. Like, I don't know, something like Helvetica. Helvetica is a brilliant font. There we go, game over. And now we're going to have another question, answer object. Do you wish to restart? I, no. Put I is the correct answer again. And I'm back to the event editor. <coughs> um, storyboard controls, we go to the start of level. Let's have, um, I think what we're going to do is have a wee bit of somber music playing. Uh, you know, for game over. So, play music. Yeah, totally that. Try this. No. That might do it. Yeah, that'll do. And actually, I'm going to have it play a sample here as well. Yeah, I'm going to have the sound of someone greeting. So, um, start of the level. Every frame is called... You either get them called level or frames. It, it can be quite confusing. Um, you know, when you want it to be called a level, it's called a frame. When you want it to be called a frame, it's called a level. It, it just doesn't... It kind of just seems a wee bit convoluted, but never mind. We go samples, voices. I think is it crying? Nope, it mustn't be in here. It must be in the other one. Um, people. I've always liked this sound. What on earth? There we go. Got someone crying. Game over. Bit sad. Bit dark. Okay, ask the question. Um, do you wish to restart the... Wrong one. How did I do it last time? So I think, um, Crevent, I did it do it last time. My goodness, I tell you, I've completely forgotten. Ah, no, that's how I did it. If the answer is correct, um, 
basically what I want to do is have it just restart the game and if the answer is false just have it end the game okay and then the final frame I'm going to create is uh, this one so basically I'm going to stick a wee backdrop in there have something like um, oh, something like a fair I don't know um, I think there was a party one here happy new year no that's wedding border Oh, congratulations. We'll, we'll go with that one, okay? Congratulations. Congratulations, right. So, yeah. Do you know what? Let's, let's just kind of go with that. And I think what I can do is I can have a time-based event. So what I can do is after a minute, I can actually have the game end. So what I'll do is just have it end the game. Now what I want to do is I'll finish this level off um, I want to add some music to this level, so what I'm going to do, you'll you'll see in the event editor, because I did loads of things in the step through editor, it's actually written them to the event. So I want to, at the start of level, um, I'm going to have it play some music. Um... Okay, that's not very dark music. I, I used the wrong music at the top. Never mind. Okay. Um, and then what I want to do is go to the step through editor. And I'm going to hit fire 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the wee valley spawn a projectile. So have it shoot another object. So what we're going to use as a projectile. I've always been one to use stupid things as a projectile. Uh, projectiles. Um, so I don't know. Possessions. Household items. I could have a game piece. Musicology. When did music become an ology? Three D objects. Ah, yes, chattering teeth. I, l I love those. And then when it shoots the chattering teeth, what we're going to do is we're going to have it play the sound of an air gun. Um, right, so if we have a look at people. Um, no, no, it's not that, is it? I think it's effect. Nope. 
Where is it? Um, genital. Or is it in parts? Okay. <sighs> Ah, maybe I could just look in weapons, because an air gun is a weapon. There we go. Perfect. Okay, if it collides with the background in the valley, we'll just ignore it. And if it falls off the bottom of the screen, I guess again, we can just ignore it for now. We'll ignore it when it hits an orange. But when it hits, when it hits the footman of doom, we'll have it destroy him. And now, we can add something to the uh, player's score. Change score. Let's, um, let's have it as 15 for killing the footman. We can't use a slider. Ah, yes, and now the footman has been destroyed, we probably should have him make a sound. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. There we go. And then let the false teeth exit on the right. Last orange is destroyed. Ah! And now the player has left on the right. Which is absolutely fine. What we're going to do now is going to have it go to the frame. The winner frame. And there we go. Okay, so... Well, I <clears throat> have to be honest, um, my memory, my, uh, the memory on my phone actually filled up, so I had to restart, well, I had to download what I had and then restart recording. Okay, so the last thing I need to do, well, still got a couple of other housekeeping uh, tasks to take care of. You may notice we don't actually have a score meter. Oh yeah, the level has kind of changed a wee bit because, unfortunately, um, between uh, my memory card filling up and me restarting the recording, <coughs> I actually lost the game. It was a bit tragic, so I had to kind of remake it. But okay, it's all done now. Um, there is no... Um, there is no score or life meter. So, we're going to create those now. So we're going to create new counter object. Um, actually no we're not going to do that are we? We're gonna... Ah yeah here we go. Create new score object. What we're going to do is we're going to have this there. Player. Player one, edit score. Okay, that's that's absolutely fine. But the player kind of needs to know that it's a score. So what I'm gonna do. Just gonna see. Can I see what size this is? Nope. Oh, it's not showing me. What I think I'm gonna need to do. Let's move that over there, create a new text object, type score, and now I'm going to stick a colon there, there we go, score colon, here we go, select the font, Arial, mm. I think it's 16. I'm not entirely sure, but it's probably going to guarantee it's probably going to look stupid, but never mind. Ah, 
That doesn't look too bad. Well, there we go. There we go. Score zero. You can barely see it against that background, but never mind. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Meant to create some new lives. And edit lives. Display as number. And I'm going to display the lives in blue. If it'll let me. Oh, a great one. Um, Aerial Bold 16. A stubborn one, this. Let's try this. There we go. Now, as with the score, there really is nothing to tell me that these are lives. So, lives left, one, Probably should change the font so it looks a wee bit more consistent. There we go. Now we've got scoring lives. Okay, now the game is almost finished. But. At the moment, it's it won't actually show up as, well, it needs an icon and a name. So, what we're going to do is we're going to call it Valley Hero by Videos Sans Frontier. And I don't know what I'm going to use for that. Is that someone mess messaging me? Filling in for Randy Karsten's cartoons. The Paramount Galaxy. I don't know what I'm creating here, but yeah. I don't know why it's going to be a ball, but it just is, because, you know what, I'm awesome. There you go. That's what it looks like, a ball. <laughs> there we go. Now, so we've got a, a name and an icon, but you need to f tell it how the players are going to play, keyboard. You can also tell it if the window's maximised on boot up, let's... Do you know what? We're not going to bother with that. Um, heading when maximised. Yeah, we'll have that. Game to include menu bar and menu displayed on boot up. That's... Do you know what? Yeah. Do you know what? No. Yeah, no. Need to be anyway, Mark. Okay, let's... Um... Now, we could also do with creating some instructions. 
So let's create those now. We'll just have some, you know, basic instructions. Do you remember their spindles, right? Been such a while since I used this. Right, let's see if I can. Uh, I'm just going to move the laptop so I can just. How? Welcome to Valley Hero. And this game, you have to. Sorry, that's just a wee alarm. Um, you have to guide him past the evil footman of doom in order to be able to win. But don't let the evil footman of doom get you. In order to achieve your goal, you need to press. You need to use the directional buttons to move the valet hero. Press shift to make him jump and press control to make him shoot off his air gun rifle. Enjoy! Excellent. So those are the instructions. So when the player goes in to help, these will come up. So basically all you need to do is just save it. Don't save it as anything else. Just kind of save the file and exit. Click and play will, of course, do the rest. Right. Multi samples? I think so. If your sound card will support it, which I believe this one will. Okay. Now there's one last thing to do once you've written a game. You need to test it. So let's do that. So this is how the game is going to look. So you're going to have music. So let's say we don't want to play it. You can see, oh yeah, there we go, it's quit. There you go. And there we go. <laughs> That's Oh no, we don't want to exit the program manager. So in a minute's time this will actually quit. So let me... Uh So this game seems to have locked up a wee bit. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> and that's it quit. Now, I want to save my work. So, um, we'll call it V Hero. Now, let's say I wanted to give this game to a friend. To maybe play on their computer. That is actually possible. But, he doesn't have, he probably won't have click, or, click and play, actually. In my case, more likely, she won't have Click and Play installed. So, I need to, of course, make it into an executable so that she can run it on her machine. So, for to do that, I mean, first of all, to give a game to another person, I have to be able to put it on a floppy disk. So, you know, let's, uh, let's sort that out. Let's stick a disk in the drive. Next thing I need to do... As well, actually, I want to make sure the disk is actually formatted, so um, let's go and do that now. 
got enough space on the desk. Click and play desk is still in the drive, so it's just taking a wee while. So I'm going to go desk, format desk, and just do a quick format. Drive A, 1.44 megabytes. Format and will erase everything. there we go that's the desk formatted so what I can do I can go back to click and play save standalone game and it'll tell me that um, I'm free to create games and software programs using click and play and to distribute these games and programs to others provided that I do not charge for the game the license for you to use the license for you to use and enjoyment the license to you for the use and enjoyment of this program permits you to distribute software created by you on a freeware basis only. You are prohibited from selling any games or programs covered or created by you either as an independent producer or as shareware. Uh, any attempt by you to distribute your creation in this fashion is a violation of this agreement and shall invalidate the license granted to you herein. And then, of course, you can get the right to sell product by... You can easily purchase a special developer's license, which gives you the right to sell products created with Click and Play. For more information, contact your nearest Click and Play user club or the official Click and Play distribution distributor for the country, or directly to um, Europress Software Limited, Europa House, Adlington Park, Macclesfield, SK10 AMP England phone 01625 859 or fax. I wonder if that number is still in use. Um, okay, so basically that's fine. Now, you can either save the game just as a standalone executable, or you can save it with an installer, and that is what I'm going to do. So... By clicking OK, what's happening now is the game has actually now been compiled. Now, <clears throat> one of my former lecturers actually was talking about click and play, or the click and play effect, or, as it's also known, the dark basic, dark basic effect. Click and play would let you create kind of games like this, you know, kind of 2D, 16-bit. Oh, here we go. Following files have been saved. Um, click and play would let you create games like this. But um, the problem is, it seemed that, you know, you could create a million different games all of which were exactly the same. Um, a lot of people found Click and Play to, you know, be very, you know, the unimaginative, very restricted in what you could and couldn't do. But then again, what you have to realise is, you know, I created a game in about an hour here, you know. Okay, it's only got, like, the one level, but I guarantee you to be able to create that game in that way, just that one level, if I was going to do it <coughs> by coding it, it would take a lot longer. <coughs> and plus, Click and Play also gives you a lot of free, uh, a lot of royalty-free uh, sprites to use, like the characters, the backdrop, the platforms, um, and other things like the false teeth. Now, now I've created the game on a disc. What I can do is I can actually go ahead and install the game. It'll actually, the funny thing is, it'll probably take longer for me to install it than it will to actually play it. 
So we're going to actually go ahead, install a game to C colon backslash windows backslash games. Directory doesn't exist, would you like to create? Yep. And the satisfying feeling comes when you go to the games program group. Okay, when you find the game pro games program group. Oh, there it is. And then you see your own game there. Look at that. Valley Hero. And I can start it up, and there it is. And that will work, actually, on any version 16 well that will work on either windows 3.x or any 32-bit version of windows and i know this because i was running click and play on windows 32 well i remember um i got click and play out back in 2007 and was running it on windows vista 32-bit um quite fun actually okay so there we have it click and play now let me show you around the rest of the laptop if anyone's still watching. So, I have Microsoft Office. There we go, Microsoft Word 6. And it all kind of starts up really quite nicely, actually. Um, the ESS audio drive actually comes with um, a nice mixer program and volume control, because of course, Windows 3.1 doesn't come with any of that stuff, which is kind of sad, but then again, it's to be expected. You know, back in the day, a lot of sound cards actually had volume controls on them, actual physical volume controls, so you really didn't need them. Let's have a look. We've got Microsoft Money. There you go. I actually prefer the dark blue title bar with this interface because I, I feel the light blue kind of... Uh, it clashed with the uh, turquoise of uh, the virtual checkbook. Okay, so that's Windows. So I think it's time we drop down to DOS and had a wee look at what was happening there. There we go. So, first thing I want to show you. We've got uh, usual, one of my usual favourites, uh, WordPerfect. Whoops, save document, junk, exit, yep. Um, do you know what? Let's have a look at a game. This is um, actually a favorite, one of uh, Freakin' D's favorites. To be honest, I quite like it as well because it's, a, it's one of the 2D platformers. This is the original Commander Keen. As you can see, this machine plays games really quite well. Probably due in part to the fact that it's a passive matrix. It's a Pentium 166, so it'll definitely be able to play things like Doom. Okay, that, that didn't go so well now, did it? So I want to, do you know what, I'll quit this because um, do you know what, I'm just going to set it to no sound card here just, just for a wee bit because um, I have been having, this is what I was going to tell you, the ESS audio drive, while it'll work with some games, doesn't necessarily work with others and Jazz Jackrabbit is an ex example of one of those that it doesn't work with. Okay. That wasn't supposed to happen. I had Jazz Jackrabbit working perfectly last night and 
that that wasn't supposed to happen. I guarantee that. Let's um, hopefully a reboot will fix the machine. I think the hard drives actually seen better days as well. <laughs> So let's just get this sorted. There we go. animations on here. So I don't I don't think this is the full version of Jazz Jack Rabbit. I would like to get the full version though. Okay that was odd. Oh yeah, it's alt and s alt to jump, space to shoot. I defy anyone to not like Jazz Jack Rabbit. I mean, seriously, this is a brilliant game. I mean, this this was uh, one of the first PC games I actually ever played. Well, actually, I tell a lie when when I say that. I mean, Jazz Jack Rabbit too was one of the first PC games I ever played. What PC games that weren't considered edutainment anyway. Um, and I played lots of things on the BBC. Actually, I played a racing game once on the BBC. I can't even mind what it was called, but yeah, I remember that. Used to have like we let uh, we um, zero characters in the middle of the road that you had to avoid. And um, when I was we I used to think that's what a ring road was. Uh, <laughs> just like one of the weak characters in the middle of the road. <laughs> okay. But uh, Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 was uh, like, you know, one of the first PC games I ever got to play. Um, it was one of the first on the compact, along with um, Grim Fandango. Which is, um, it's quite an odd game is that. Is grim. Um, let me go, let me go. Would you do the fandango? Thunderbolts of lightning, very, very frightening me. <laughs> Sorry, I I don't own the rights to that song. By the way, that's uh, that's actually owned by Queen. It was uh, it was something Freddie Mercury wrote. He was a genius. I uh, long live. Uh, Long live the legend that was Freddy. Just a shame that um, you know I was kind of too young to really appreciate. Um, yeah, I mean he died in nineteen ninety one, and I was only wee. Okay, so that's uh, that's Jazz Jack Rabbit. Just wondering what else I have installed on here, if anything. Um, I know I've got wacky wheels. I wonder if I have anything installed where the sound works. Sorry, uh, you, yeah, that's me. Okay, let's let's play some wacky wheels. The music works, but the sound effects don't. But because I have the music turned off anyway, um, there's really no point. 
Oh, that's, that's always good when you forget how to accelerate. Never mind. Now I know some of y'all didn't really like the way that I was playing Duke or Doom, but, you know, some people can play games better than others, you know. It's not really yours to criticise, isn't that? I like this game, you can shoot hedgehogs? What? Why did you shoot a hedgehog of all things? You know, seriously. <laughs> Obviously, um, a battle ensued between some of my friends, Wacky Wheels versus Mario Karts, and to be honest, I, I have to say I prefer this, because, uh, well, to be honest, the controls are just much better. You know, I've played Mario Karts, and it's, it's just like, yeah. You know, so I do actually prefer this to Mario Karts because, I don't know, I can actually play the damn thing. There we go. And I finished first. And uh, the tiger that I'm playing is very happy about that. Okay. So I think, that, I think that'll just about do it for MS-DOS. So what I'm going to do now is, um, yeah, it's not the full version of this either. Okay, what I think I'm going to do now is um, go into Windows, Windows 95. Um, it would have quarter deck quick booted there, but um, I uh, stopped it from doing that. In fact, I think I might turn quick boot off for the simple fact that I do have a dual boot machine. So I can either choose a Windows 95 or the Windows 95 command prompt, which will load everything but Windows. But I'm just going to stick with Windows. Here we go. Starting Windows 95, and as you can see, I've installed Microsoft Plus. I've also tested QWM with Windows 95 as well, just to see how it goes. And to be honest, I freed up all of 44k of RAM. Hardly worth it, in my opinion. It's more useful if you have a DOS or Windows 3.x workstation. I guess the only thing that I would want a memory ma manager to do in Windows 95 would be to manage a program in its separate memory space. Like Windows NT does, but then that would probably, you know, it would probably interfere with some of the compatibilities of Windows 95. <clears throat> and you get a nice wee splash screen. Okay, so here it is, usual Windows 95 install. Actually, I have an old version of WinImage on here, and there's a good reason for that. I have a floppy disk drive for my main computer, but I'm not too sure if it's a floppy disk drive or Windows 7. It will not read from or write to 720k floppy disks. Now, I actually sometimes have need to have a need to use 720k discs and as a result I can't actually read as a result I need an older machine to actually use to actually be able to write read and write to them um, and then I have in here I actually have a card reader I see a, a compact flash card reader installed um, which is actually quite a useful thing to have. It means I can uh, transfer files to and from Windows 95. This machine has, of course, no USB port on it. There's um, Internet Explorer 5.5 on here. Not that it will, not that it will do much, obviously, because like I'm not online. I could be online if I installed an Ethernet adapter, which I might do at some point. Um, so I think that's what I'll do. Entertainment Pack for Packard Bell. That's on Windows, the Windows 3.1 side as well. Theme Hospital's on here, but to be honest, the display is useless at, stri at Panel Fit, so I don't really play that. But I will quickly show you a game that will play very well on this system, as soon as I can get the CD-ROM eject. 
here we go. I want to show you a game that we'll play while I'm here. It's Virtual Springfield. So what I'm going to do is going to stick it in the CD drive. Some an interesting thing about this machine is it's one of the few latitudes. Oh, there we go. That auto plays. One of the few latitudes. Well, it's the only latitude that I've ever known to have a both a CD-ROM drive and a floppy drive in the chassis. Here we go. Play. And thanks to the BIOS update, I no longer have any sound problems at all in Windows 95. Does take quite a while to load up in here. Yeah, I've just realised that's the Stone Cutters logo. <laughs> here we go. Welcome to Springfield. I'm Troy McClure. You may remember me as town spokesman for such computer travel guides as Fredonia, Gateway to Wichita, and Fairbanks Needs Women. Of course, we all know Springfield for its award-winning dandelions and as birthplace of the glove compartment. But that's merely scratching the surface of a place the great Calvin Coolidge once labeled a pea-sized town with lima bean-sized dreams. So warm up your clicking finger and let's explore a land the poets call Springfield, USA! <laughs> I love these animations. The derelicts are out. Thanks. Yeah, love you too, Skeletor. Oh dear, I believe I went in the wrong direction. Or maybe not. <laughs> that always cracks me up. <laughs> well, you might as well come in and look around. Just watch out for the boy. Turn your back on him for two seconds and you'll regret it. Do I get a slice of pizza? Babies today got it easy. In my day, we used babies for furniture. That wasn't hats. No, we used hats for furniture. <laughs> Okay, we'll just do one daft thing and then I'm going to get out of here because it looks like I'm going to be running out of memory again soon. Time to put another monkey into orbit! And fart! <laughs> 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 I think I'm going to be sick!
never understand Bart. Sometimes he's friends with the bullies. Sometimes he's any enemies with the bullies. Sometimes he's friends with Martin. Sometimes he's enemies with Martin. I don't know. I, I just don't understand. Oh, well. Good show, though. I do enjoy The Simpsons. Um, so I'm just going to quit this. There we go. Just have a look, uh, see if um, anything else interesting was set up in Windows 95. I'm not too sure if it was or not. But um, in any case, I do I do have a title that I wish to show. As this is a multimedia laptop, I think it's only fair we show Encarta. And I do actually have a genuine copy of Encarta 96 as well. Came uh, as part of a Packard Bell bundle. Now this is quite interesting because Encarta 96 had both installers for Windows 3.1 and 95. Um, and in Windows 95, of, of course, you have... Auto Run. Into that good man. Dylan Thomas. Maybe? That's good. They don't often have the courage to look up. But, um, there we go. So there's Encarta. Really sorry, I'm having to speed things up a wee bit now. Um, so we're going to close out of that. Office for Windows 95. Um, I also installed PaintShop Pro in here. I have PaintShop Pro 3 in Windows 3.1. Um, you know, I put PaintShop Pro on both these partitions in case I want to make screenshots, which I probably will at some point. Um, if we have a look in the system information, you'll see that I've got it. It says Dell... Dell Latitude XPA CD MMX M166 X ST, sorry, not XT, and 48 uh, megs of RAM, which is kind of nice. We also have Quicken, um, online services, Netscape Mail, which comes with Quicken. Um, there's also updated versions of Money and Works. Although I didn't get to install Wax on Windows uh, 3.1. Classy as ever. There's Microsoft Wax for Windows 4.0. I used that on the Compact Presario 2240. Didn't have Office at the time. Um, there's also an old version. Well, actually it's, um, it's not that old. This version of WinRAR is from May 2008. It's... Um, Copyright 2008 is probably one of the last mainstream Windows 95 programs there was. How's about that? Mainstream support for Windows 9X was actually dropped in 2006. Microsoft completely disregarded them. Um, and then, of course, I suppose we could do a tiny wee bit of the Canyon test. So let's do that. In fact, uh, let's see if it's in the documents menu. Yes, it is. And you can see that the uh, MIDI actually sounds... It actually is FM synthesis on here.
I love this. So I guess that pretty much does it for the uh, Dell Latitude XPA 1P... No, let's try that again. I guess that does it for the Dell Latitude XPA CD MMX M166 ST. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this uh, long video. I know that there's probably only one person watching right now. Um, so, yeah, to the Power Map Galaxy, thank you. <laughs> Um, and if anyone else is watching, thank you also. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you liked what you saw, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, www.videosomfront... No, www.youtube.com forward slash videosomfrontier. Um, or if you're um, wanting to see the URL written down, please wait as it will follow. Um instructions on how to subscribe will follow. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you'll tune in to my next video.